There we go. All right. Yeah, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. What's up, y'all? How you doing? How's it been? It's been a hot I know. It feels like forever. It was only one week, but still, yeah, you're so right. <laughs> one it was too long. I know exactly, exactly. But it was a really interesting week, to yeah. say the least. Yeah, awesome, awesome. I look forward to hearing about it. Um, now, the topic of tonight's call is going to be the grid session. So this session is going to blow your damn mind, all right? So put your, you know, distractions away, um, phone off, you know, notepad and paper if you wish. Your mind's going to be blown. But there is two questions that I want to get started with in terms of um, asking Mike that you know anyway that would just in terms of, um, you know, what this market is you know we spoke about it a little bit last week and you know people want to know about the game of this industry and why we're playing it so i mean mike is you know exceptional at explaining this and those who love the rabbit hole love mike so i uh i want to bring you on and you can tell us all about your week and then i'm gonna shut up <laughs> so wait answer the question first um yeah oh in in time in time but that is a topic for tonight <clears throat> Okay. Um, yeah, it actually weaves in, uh, perfectly. So, uh, that'll be good. But, uh, yeah, the weekend was crazy. Um, really good kick in the ass for sure, uh, that everyone needed. And, uh, it was really awesome. Jordan Belfort was there as well. The Wolf of Wall Street. That was really, really crazy, uh, for sure. Uh, have a bunch of training, but we will go over all of that next week. So we will, not go through any of that right now because this recording is again going to be focused on that but for anybody that's going to watch this recording make sure you're here next week for that because it's really really good if you guys have a bit through straight line but anyways um other than that yeah it was a lot of um you know it was really actually really really good seeing everyone because <laughs> this is the longest i've ever personally not traveled uh that whole six months of uh the first you know, round of quarantine. I know y'all are still in it, but uh, for us out here, at least, there was no traveling or anything. So it's good to see everybody, but, you know, also everybody else really, really getting kicked into high gear, which again, we will talk about um, either on the next call or another call, SJ, we'll, 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 we'll collab on that here um, very soon because I have not been able, it's a, it's a whole thing, I'll get to it, but Anyways, yes, this recording is going to be focused on that. So we are, oh, can you give me a, what you call? The uh, uh, Why can't ability. I <laughs> um, that's bizarre. Jenna, you're there. Yo. I can't make my post. Hi, Jenna. Hello, Mikey. Oh, I miss you guys. I miss you. I miss you too, for real. Can't wait. Yeah, I should have been there. Like, I would actually be there right now if it wasn't for COVID. I know. This is still just as crazy down there. What did you need, Estre? Um, can you just make my post? I can't share my screen. Oh, okay. There you go. Thank you. Okay. My bad. All good. All right. So we are going to go through uh, these slides uh, pretty quickly. I'm not going to slow down because uh, it's going to be for the recording. So if you guys haven't been through this, strap in because it's going to be a lot of information, really, really rapid firing. If you're going to take notes, um, I would highly suggest so. And, um, you know, you can always go back to the recording. So anyways, you know what time it is. So here we go. Is it? Okay. There we go. Okie doke. So let's start. This is the first definition that I want everybody to write down or in simple, just um, recognize that this is the point. The definition of pattern recognition is the automated recognition of patterns and regularities in data. Pattern recognition is closely related to the artificial intelligence and machine learning. What we do as traders in general is that we are constantly in search of patterns. And ultimately what the patterns are for is for us to utilize. When we get taught to look for certain things, we are constantly looking for them because once we identify them, that's when we of course ideally wanna take advantage of them. 
and you know consistently do that over and over and over i wanted to make it clear that pattern recognition has a definition which is this of course right here and it's very really really important to understand because this is a very key part of the foundation of this entire slideshow i want you to remember that a trader's job is to be able to identify patterns in data right or on the charts or with the candlesticks and uh be able to of course capitalize off of that off of the things that you've seen before right foundations to set is all of this right here so zero one two three four five six seven eight nine is the base 10 number system the base 10 number system is in every single language it's in every single thing in fact as you will see but it is another incredibly important thing to understand. It might seem simple right now, but again, there is rhyme and reason, as you will see. We have a little, wait a minute. I am on. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. Whoopsies. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, um, and then the next things, of course, look at some applied mathematics, vortex mathematics, as you will see, the introduction into what is known as numerology, the science of numbers, and how, of course, I apply this to the markets, which is quarters, the grid. Numbers are how we determine right from wrong. One plus one equals two, and there is, of course, no question to it. If, and then, of course, the one of the key questions is, is how are the markets any different when it comes to this simple truth? If you say one plus one equals three, you are objectively wrong. No matter where you go in the world, no matter what language is spoken, if you put one finger up and another finger up and say that that somehow equals three, you are, again, objectively wrong. Because, again, numbers are how we determine right from wrong. If it does not add up, then, of course, there is an issue. So a couple of other things is that again we did not create these we did not create math we discovered it and I always like to put think about what that really means is that we just stumble across these things again numbers are how we determine right from wrong from atoms to galaxies to our own DNA we are surrounded by geometrical shapes patterns and and patterns within the number system and nine, as you guys will see here in, in just a little bit, the specific number that I point to in this is nine. And then the construction of the universe, galaxy, solar system, and life itself literally revolves around the number nine. As an example, a woman is pregnant for nine months. All right, now write this definition down. It is any belief Numerology is any belief in the divine or mystical relationship between a number and one or more coinciding events. It is also the study of the numerical values of letters, words, names, and ideas. Essentially, whenever you hear the word numerology, if you were thinking about life path numbers or zodiac signs or any of those kinds of things, that is not what I'm talking about. Every letter in the 26 letter alphabet that we all use has a numeric code behind it. These numbers, or I'm sorry, these letters did not come out of nowhere. And it's not like they just decided to have a 26 letter alphabet. It was designed to be that way. And so, again, numerology is a much deeper understanding because it is quite literally the science of numbers. All right. Uh, again, just a little you know, demonstration here. Uh, it doesn't matter what language or what the symbol looks like on a piece of paper. It is the same regardless. So I always just like to throw that in right there because again, regardless of the symbol or the word that is spoken, the value of the number is constant. It never changes. All right. And then let's now take a couple of look at some examples here. So Fibonacci is one of the more popular ones for traders, of course, because it is something that we all have been taught inherently on charts, right? But of course, F Fibonacci in general is not something that is, you know, of course, specific to trading. In fact, it is everywhere, as I will demonstrate here in just a second, but it is a universal mathematical pattern 
that is constantly, again, in, in constant creation. Now, again, we did not discover this. Fibonacci is the last name of a person that we associate as to who, quote unquote, discovered this. So Fibonacci is not, it, this is the golden ratio. This is what is, again, used with the development of a tree, for example. You start with one here on the bottom, then you go one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, three plus five is eight, five plus eight is 13, eight plus eight, I'm sorry, eight plus 13 is 21, and this never ends, right? This is just a simple little example of the tree, of a tree that's doing it. And again, the Fibonacci ratio, the golden ratio, the Greek symbol for it, what it looks like on you know, a piece of paper when you just draw it out with the numbers. And then of course, just a handful of examples of literally where it applies, which is again, everywhere. In your DNA structure, you can look at your hand and see the Fibonacci ratio, seashells, hurricanes, zebras, uh, even crocodiles, snakes, the, the cow lick on your head, I mean, trees, grass, you know, the coat on your animal, whatever it looks like, it is all by design of this specific mathematical pattern that we have again started to, well, not started, but what we have figured out, what we have discovered about the world that we live in is completely driven by mathematical precision and geometric things and numbers, which is what we are gonna consistently continue to come back to with this. Here's another one really quick, it's pi. Um, it's not just used for the circumference of a circle, like with what you were taught in, um, you know, you know, school potentially, if you remember it, 3.14, you know, that never ending number, what this is right here. Uh, there's a much, much bigger application of pi, but again, we're not going to go into it because again, it's just another mathematical pattern that we have used as to how we obviously determine things for, uh, architecture for, again, math and how we solve problems, how we divide into fractions and things like that. There's a lot of mathematical patterns that go along with this number. And again, this is the Greek symbol for it up here at the top. Something simple. Now, this is where things start to get a little different. Time, like whatever time that it is, like right now it is 6.15 a.m. for me, right? That is based off of this calendar right here. And the Gregorian calendar is the calendar used in most of the world today. It is named after Pope Gregory the 13th, who introduced it in 1582. So even how me and you will sit here and say, well, it's not 6.15 a.m. for you guys, but for me, for example, it is, and I think it's eight or nine for you guys, eight or nine, 15, whatever, 16, whatever it is. And uh, again, that is made and how we even constitute that was changed in 1582. And that is what we use today. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, January, February, March, 11 p.m., 5 p.m., 2 a.m., 6, 15 a.m., all of that. Every single bit of the time structure that we use is something that was created. And again, it wasn't like they just decided to have 24 hours in a day or just decided out of nowhere to have 12 months in a year or any of those other kinds of things. There is mathematical principle behind it, as I will demonstrate here in just a bit. But I would just always like to make that clear specifically. Is that again, even our time structure is literally just a construct. And I should, well, I'll go ahead and just show you this right here since it's already on the screen. But this is Nikola Tesla. And one of the things about him is, well, if you honestly, I don't even know uh, what well, I do, but there is literally way too much to discuss on this one, this one human being. But there's two quotes that you're going to see. One of them is this. If you only knew the magnificence of three, six, and nine, then you would have the keys to the universe or the keys to your life. The key to understanding what is going on is all through what he will then describe in the second quote that you guys will see, which is thinking, if you want the secrets of the universe, you must start thinking in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. All three of those, again, our numbers. Whenever you listen to like 432 hertz, for example, 
with, uh, you know, meditative music, for example, that changes the brain waves inside of your brain, as we will see. This is always a fun little thing that uh, Tesla himself said. And uh, I'll kind of explain what it means, but alpha waves in the human brain are between six and eight hertz. The wave frequency of the human cavity resonates between six and eight hertz. All biological systems operate in the same frequency range, meaning all life does. The human brain's alpha waves function in this range and the electrical resonance of the earth is between six and eight hertz. Thus, our brain, our, our, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, thus our entire biological system, the brain and the earth itself work on the same frequencies. If we can control that resonant system electronically, we can directly control the entire mental system of humankind to ascend. Now they of course understand it and use it as a different way because they control us through that specifically. He figured this out a long, long time ago and that is exactly what he was talking about is that they of course have the grid centers of the earth matched in a very, very specific way because that's what's going on. All right, here's a fun little video because remember what I was saying that time is not random yeah well here and there is one thing that i have to explain about this video if you do not remember what a digital root number is if you can't remember like back to math class what a digital what the digital root of a number is is take the number 44 for example the digital root number of 44 is eight because whenever you have a double digit or three digit four digit five whatever amount of digit number that you have, you are always going to reduce it down to a single number. This is how numerology works, but it's also, again, a mathematical principle. So if the number is 44, again, the digital root is eight. If the number is, let's say, 47, then that would be uh, what's, of course, what uh, seven plus, yeah, 47, seven plus four, that would be 11. And then 11 is one plus one equals two. So the digital root number of 47 is two. Um, you know, the, the digital root number of 113 is one plus one plus three, which is five, right? That's the digital root number. So we're about to do that with time. So again, there's 14, 40 minutes in a day. One plus four plus four is nine. By the way, you can just remove zeros in numerology. 86,400 seconds. So 8 plus 6 plus 4, 10, 18, 1 plus 8 is 9. Ten thousand eighty minutes in a week, 9. Same thing. 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 6 is 16, plus 2 is 18, 1 plus 8 is 9. Minutes and seconds in a day, week, month, and year will all reduce to the number 9. Totally unaffected by the varying number of days in the months, or years, or leap years, or daylight savings, or any of that other sh stuff. It'll always reduce to a digital root number of nine. So, number nine seems to govern time and space, which it does. Uh, let's let this finish out here so I can go to the next slide. There we go. All right, and we're gonna to continue to hammer this home. Come on, go to the next slide. There we go. All right, again, the resolution scale on a um, television or a monitor or a TV is this, again the same thing. You are gonna consistently see the numbers three, six, and nine when you start to obviously look for them. 
you will, you will definitely start to identify the patterns. So like a 720 video or 480p video or in HD when it becomes 1080 or 1440 hertz on the new gaming monitors. And then there's a lot of them that are 2160. And again, that just continues to go on and on. So much can be learned from this basic string of numbers, which is again, the base 10 number system. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight equals 36, which equals nine. Three, six, and nine is formed from the first eight digits in its own unique way. The most basic sequence shows us that three, six, nine represents continuance and survival for literally the code and the reality of this physical reality that we're experiencing. Kind of fun little thing that you can do no matter what you multiply uh, together, you will immediately start to discover in this three, six, nine pattern. So what's one times three is three, two times three is six, three times three is nine, four times three is 12, which equals three, five times three is 15, and that's six. Six times three is 18, this is nine. Seven times three is 21, three. Eight times three is 24, six. And this never ends. 369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369369
So again, every thought, every emotion, every action, everything that you are looking at, the air, the oxygen, this is what it looks like. But of course, this is just it on a two-dimensional perspective with sand. It is not a two-dimensional thing. We're looking at it at a two-dimensional perspective. It is literally in front of you, behind you, literally inside of you, above you, below you in the ground. This is what it looks like. But of course, our eyes cannot see it because our eyes aren't, you know, we can see only a little bit on that scale. And so again, these numbers will just never stop. So we'll just keep going. And again, brain waves. Remember what we were talking about, deep sleep. You have delta, delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma waves for your brain and how your brain ultimately does all of this. Again, with all of the different types of, you know, deep sleep, light sleep, relaxed alertness, active vigilance state, intense neuro, neuronal activity, hypervigilance, all fun stuff, right? Same thing when I was saying with the light spectrum. All we can see with our eyes is this visible light. What's visible? You obviously know that radio waves exist. You know that Wi-Fi exists. You know that you know x-rays and infrared, how you see in the dark. All of these things exist, but our eyes can only see a very small subsection of what is considered to be the light spectrum. So you can't see this. Even though, again, all of this comes back to the final point of this conversation. Now, I'm going to stop on the screen sharing for a second so you guys can see me. And uh, um, hold on one second. <clears throat> uh, let me see. Hold on. Um, okay. So I, okay. All right. So before we push any further, what I want you guys to understand why I just did all that was something that is to ultimately demonstrate something extremely important is that if again, numbers are how we determine right from wrong, what I just showed you was that literally every single thing in physical reality is literally number-based. Again, I will give you one more example if you do not know. Your age, your height, your weight, what time is it? What's your bank account number? What's the number in your bank account? How many push-ups can you do? Well, how fast are you going? Miles per hour, whatever, you, I forgot uh, if y'all say that or not down there. Um, you know, what was your high score in the video game? How many shots did you hit? How many shots did you miss? How much pressure, how much tire pressure do you have in your tire? Every single thing in our lives is a number. Every single thing. Doesn't matter what it is. You were either a slave to numbers or you become a master of them. And a slave to numbers, for example, is somebody who is, let's say, overweight. What is the number that they are slaves to? The number on a scale. See, if you wanted to lose weight, for example, it's not that you're hitting a weight goal, right? It's that you are actively working so hard to get to a certain point that you stop worrying about the number that is on a scale because you start doing all of these other things and then you lose the weight. How you don't lose the weight is when you focus specifically on losing 50 pounds. How do you do more push-ups? If you try to get to 50 push-ups, do 100. That's how you beat the numbers as opposed to climbing the mountain of 31, 32, 33. Do you see what I'm saying? You either learn that everything that is happening in this world is comprised by very, very, very specific things, or you agree that it is coincidence or that it is luck or randomness 
that happens in this world that creates these things. And I'm going to tell you something. I do not believe in luck. Literally, it is an idea that was created to explain math that mean you cannot understand. If everything that I just demonstrated to you before I finally pull it onto the charts doesn't show that to you, I don't know how to define pattern recognition in a simpler way. So now as we put it in, now as we put it in to the charts here, oh, there's a question. If everything is numbers and I don't disagree, why is the number nine important as opposed to one? Because it is both, it is nine, nine specifically, is the most important because it is the highest value of the base 10 number system. But again, all of the other numbers of the base 10 number system, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, equal nine. So nine equals all of it and none of it at the same time. It is the only one that does that. Nine defines the degrees in a circle, as in 180 degrees, 360, um, 540, 720, 1080, and so on and so on and so on, on top of all of the other things. Nine months, nine planets. Um, I mean, I, off the top of my head, there are so many of them, but I'm only thinking of a few of them right now. Nine is important specifically, not based off of the idea that it is somehow, and, and this is the thing that I wanted to make clear, just because nine is the most important doesn't negate the other ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight are also just as relevant. I purposely point out nine on purpose because it has so much behind it and it's very easy to move through it because as we get further into the schematics of, um, you know, looking at numbers from a science and just again, a pattern and data collecting and looking for the arrhythmic patterns within data and information, nine is the one that just pops up the most. And so it's the, uh, it's again, the easiest one to demonstrate, but it certainly, of course, does not negate one, for example. It's a good question. I appreciate the question seriously, because that means you're thinking about it, or you've potentially had this conversation as well. So I definitely appreciate that. And so now let's pull it into the charts because numbers in math cannot be argued with. Therefore, the prices or numbers that we identify are holding value. They are not a bias or an opinion of mine. What happens at the prices is what's debatable, but the grid of the numbers is a solid place to start from. Go to the next slide. There we go. Here we go. So price and time are the number one and number two most important things. Um, number one and number, you know, just the number one and number two most important things when it comes to trading for me. I By identifying the horizontal lines and the vertical lines is when we find this. The two most important factors or indicators I utilize in order to get an idea on which way the market might move. Everything else comes second to these two. Again, both of them are numbers that we cannot argue with. And once we start to find the same thing happening over and over and over, this is when you really start to be able to take advantage of what's happening in the trading or what's happening on the charts and when this is going on. So let's, let me show you now as in demonstrating this breakdown of price. So the idea of the grid or quarters in general is that price is fluctuating between one large quarter point, which is what LQP stands for, from one of them to the other, depending on, of course, what's happening in the markets. In between the levels of these large quarter points, you have what's known as the minors. Just like in the music scale, you have the majors and the minors. And that is where, of course, I find my opportunities. The whole minors and the half levels are where I look to personally trade on an intraday perspective. Even though quarter theory, if you guys read the book, which I highly, of course, recommend, 
it is a uh, in the book by Lon Yotov, of course, it is presented as a swing or I'm sorry, yeah, swing trading strategy, but it doesn't matter because you could be scalping with the same information. So again, this is what it looks like on USD JPY starting from 100 on the bottom and 120 all the way up here at the top. This is 2000 pips worth of information. 100 all the way up to 120 is 2000 pips, right? So all we are doing is dividing it into four. So from 100 to 110, you have the four quarters, 102.50, 105, 107.50, then 110. And this process, of course, never stops. So 112.50, 115, 117.50, 120. Then you have 122.50, then 125, then 127.50, and 130. And then that, of course, does not stop on just USD JPY. It's every single chart because every single one of them has that horizontal grid. The horizontal lines are the prices that the quote unquote price of the market is going to. And then the other ones, of course, well, let me show you. Uh, okay, so let me now show you, I'm sorry, the deeper breakdown. So this is looking at uh, USDJPY again from 105 that's down here on the bottom all the way up to 110. So this is a 500 pip range. And when you see MLQP, these are the majors. So what are the majors on USDJPY, for example? You have 105 or I'm sorry, not 105, excuse me. You have 100 down here at the bottom, major. The next major is 110. And then the next major is 120. The next one is 130, 140, 150, 160, so on and so on. Same thing, but just broken down into smaller increments, right? So 105, which is the bottom line, then you go up 250 pips, which is at 107.50, and then 110. And then in between that, you have 105.50, 106, 106.50, 107, 107.50. I promise you guys, if you're still not getting it, I promise you, you are overthinking it. It is very, very simple once you just grab onto the idea because it doesn't matter which chart you're looking at. Every single chart has a grid. On AUDUSD, it's 7,400, 7,500, 7,600, 7,800. 7,900, then 80. 80 is the major large quarter point for AUD USD. So is 70, 60, 50, 40, and 90, 100 on uh, gold. It's about to hit 2K. So 2K is the major. And then um, 1,500 is a major because it's, it's, that one's a little different because it's a commodity. And then um, uh, 1,000 would be another, you know, another major for it. Going back to uh, the Forex pairs, 1.10 on Euro USD, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15. .1 and then, of course, you have the half levels between all of them. So those are the 50s, 105.50, 106.50. 107.50, though, is, of course, that large quarter. Do you see? So it is the large quarter, so that one has a higher significance because it is a large quarter point. And remember, price is fluctuating between the large quarter points. That is the, the part of price. Now, let's go over to time. So again, time, when it comes to trading, is broken down into multiple categories, not just the first thing that just jumped into your head potentially. For example, what time of the day is it? Yeah. What hour of the day is it? also relevant. What minute of the hour is it? And then here, let me ask you, and, um, and whether you're on the recording or watching this live, if I were to just pop quiz you right now, there's the question. What hour of the four-hour candlestick is currently printing that we you are on right now? So for all of you guys that are live, we, you know, I, what time is it? I know the answer. So do you guys know what the answer is? And if you don't, that's the point that I'm trying to make is that wouldn't you agree that the first hour of a four hour candlestick, or at least let's say even the second hour is not going to be as relevant as the four hour, the fourth hour, which is obviously going to close a higher time frame candle. And that should be and is more relevant than let's say the second hour of a four hour candlestick. Does that make sense? Because as we get closer, let me put it to you this way. Have you ever seen a candlestick open up 
extremely extremely bullish for example and then by the time it closes it's a hundred percent in the opposite direction as you get closer to the close of a candle they stop trying to psych you out so to speak and then you're going to start to really see what the actual candle itself is going to print because again every single candlestick and every single pip wick everything that happens on the market is created none of it is again random or coincidence or luck or you know just up in the air and just whatever happens happens they are literally creating these markets for us because they literally produce and create money there's like this forbes article going around right now which is kind of funny um i don't know if you guys saw it but it's about jeff bezos and he's the first man ever to have a net worth of 200 billion dollars if you if anybody here really genuinely believes that, then you don't understand the money system because the Rothschilds, for example, quite literally print money. So 200 billion is just as relevant as a $20 person. <laughs> they literally could just print more money. He is not the richest man in the world. I just think that's funny. Anyways, kind of random thing. But these is, this is something that I want all of you guys to remember. This is another part of time. And I want you to just say this in your head. 2, 10, 11, 16, 24. 2, 10, 11, 16, 24. 2, 10, 11, 16, 24. Candle 2 is Tokyo. Candle 10 is Frankfurt, Germany. Candle 11 is London, London. Candle 16 is New York. And candle 24 is y'all because y'all started. And the, the down, you know, with Australia, um, it doesn't, doesn't start it. It just rolls over to the next day. So I guess if that's what you want to call it. Um, anyways, Sydney and Tokyo are, of course, open at the same time. Frank, Frankfurt, London, and New York are open at the same time. Or I'm sorry, Frankfurt and London are. Then London and New York are. And then New York and Sydney are for just a couple of hours. That's how this works. And so with the session breaks, of course, you have the start of the 24-hour day. And then, of course, the next session break ends that 24-hour day. And so when the stock exchanges open, again, in Tokyo, Frankfurt, Germany, London, New York, and Sydney, this is very, very relevant to you becoming a trader because you need to know when these candles print. I don't know if you guys watch the London candle or the New York candles print, the open candle, but the London candle that prints very much so does have the ability and does all of the time. You can go back test it yourself to see that the open, the London open candle literally can set the tone for the rest of the day. And the New York candle can do the same thing. I mean, when the stock exchange is open, you need to know when that is all happening. So 2, 10, 11, 16, and 24. Again, candle 2, candle 10, candle 11, candle 16, candle 24. And candle 24 is the one to the left of the session break. All right. And then, let's see. So here it is finally put all together. This is AUDUSD. This is AUDUSD right here with nothing on the screen. You don't really see the pattern, do you? I don't know if you guys can see it, but what I'm about to show you is that price and time do the same thing over and over and over again. This is AUDUSD on the hourly. And before I show you the next slide, when I show you the next slide, what you're gonna see is that there is a pattern here that's right before your eyes. But since it is not visually being shown to you yet, you probably don't see it. But here you go. So, do you notice anything now? Well, of course you do, there's a lot going on. That black rectangle that you see here is identifying all of these little blue circles that have these arrows on top of them. What those are, these little blue circles, is actually, in fact, when I go live for Go Live, the trade house session. When I go live for the platform, I draw a little blue circle to indicate that that is exactly where we were at that particular time. Do you notice anything? And let me just go ahead and answer it since we are on the recording. 
the price of AUD USD from August 5th of 2019 to August 21st, 2019. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days out of 10, 11, 12 days, nine out of 12 days, you had the price of the market, AUD USD, you know, that thing that we can look to capitalize on and be able to identify something like this to be able to take advantage of it. It is doing the same thing over and 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 over. Do you see it when it looks like that? Not really. See, when you start to look at the market in a pattern-driven fashion, this is what happens. You realize that the market is doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over. The moment that you start to take advantage of these patterns is, again, where you can either A, not be in the market, or B, absolutely be capitalizing on the market because the entire point is, again, what is at the beginning of the slideshow. We are here to identify patterns so we can ultimately take advantage of these patterns and capitalize off of them financially, monetarily speaking. That is the point, right? Here it is, price and time doing the same thing consistently over and over and over. This is the grid. It is happening at specific points and doing this at specific times and that it is not vague like this in terms of price action, understanding candle by candle. It is there. Whether you choose to acknowledge it or not, this is still here. It is still happening. So the entire point of all of this, guys, is that you guys can go and understand the way that the markets are moving and that they are, again, doing these things in a very specific manner on purpose. So what I do is I'm waiting for the right price and the right time when they are on the grid because again, those aren't my numbers. When I look at USDJPY, for example, and it's between 105.50 and 106, I didn't identify 105.50 105, and 106 because I wanted to. I am again respecting exactly what we spent the first 45 minutes covering. If the numbers are right here, why aren't they right here? That is the question. And they are. You know, that's the imposing question, the thought provoking question of the markets are literally run by machines, by computers. Computers use algorithms. Do y'all know what computers are? It's coding. You know what coding is? Zeros and ones. This is a completely driven and mandated and orchestrated and maintained system by definition. These candles and USDJPY and gold and EURUSD and GBP CAD and AUDJPY, all of these things, they did not just poof into existence. They were created and contrived. The, this is what smart money is all about. This is what institutional trading is all about. We learn how they do it. And then we start moving with them as opposed to against them. Everybody's taught to, again, trade against them. This is a start to understand that they are absolutely moving the markets in a specific way. And when you understand, again, the lines, the vertical and the horizontal lines, you start to see that imbalances or mitigation or gaps in the market or any of those other things are happening at these, at these price levels. Now, you could, of course, say, well, of course they happen at price levels, Mike, because it couldn't not be happening on a price level because it is literally existing on that grid. So not being on a number is impossible. So then you could argue and say, well, what you're saying is then redundant because of course it's going to land on a number. Yeah, that's true. But then I encourage anybody that, you know, has gotten to that point of this conversation to go back test and see for yourself on any chart, I don't care which chart. You can do it on the commodities, do it on the US 30, do it on the Dow, do it on Euro JPY, do it on 
gold, oil, do it on whatever you want. It doesn't matter. This is something that, again, is a foundational principle for them in trading, and that this is something that, again, the markets and the algorithms use to be able to, um, you know, again, capitalize off of people's lack of understanding of what I just explained. The book is called Quarter Theory. So if you guys want it, it is called Quarter Theory. I am um, just on that. If you want the book, I have it. So let me know and I can... I would just post it in the Discord, if 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 you could, yeah. uh, please, SJ. Thank you so much. And it is a very tedious book. I will be one hundred with you guys. It is not an easy read, but he consistently just slams it into your mind. I'll just put it to you that way, because he does. It is um, a very very dry book. I will just tell you that. Even for trading education, it is extremely. <laughs> you got to kind of push through it a little bit, but it really kind of forces you to look at the market in this, you know, in a different way. And if you do that, we can definitely start talking about the hesitation zones and where the, you know, what sort of what quarters matter more on certain pairs than other pairs, or we can then start, you know, getting into the deeper aspects of it as well. That's just the surface because that's all we have time to really explain. There's, a lot more that goes into it. But in order to understand the deeper levels, you have to understand all of that. So, sorry, kind of what's the book? Yeah, quarter theory. I don't, you don't have quarters down there, right? So like out here in the States, the highest, well, not the highest coin, but the most common highest value coin is 25 cents. So four quarters is a dollar, right? Um, now I know everybody doesn't use that same metric system, of course, but the markets themselves and what we're talking about, they globalized trade from the States. So our math standard was the thing that created the algorithms of the markets. That's why quarters are relevant. And it's, you know, for, it's like this in multiple places in the world, but Australia is one of them where quarters don't just inherently fall into your mind of like, Oh, I got it. You know, for Americans, it's a lot easier to pick up on because quarters are what we're taught on, you know? So that's where it comes from. But, it's explained in the book. So that is it on that. Do we have any questions, guys? Now, money posted is something interesting in there. Um, the numbers in the charts from like Tokyo, Germany, London equals 63, which is nine. So, yes, good observation. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, you guys still use miles and fee. I know. <laughs> I know. That was so good. Thank you. Um, okay. The quarter lines on your chart. Can you, there's a couple of questions on how to put them on. Yeah, I'll show you. You can use the indicator if you want. Um, there's an indicator on trading view. If you really want to do it, I personally do it myself. So, I mean, I'll just, you know, go to a, a whole new brand new chart here. Just really quick. Hold on. So I'll just go to a brand new chart. One I never look at. Uh, Euro CHF, sure. All right, there's Euro CHF. This is something I never trade. Uh, you know, delete all this right here. What do I need? Okay, so it's at 1.0864, boom, got it. So the levels for Euro CHF would start here and be at 1.09. So that is a whole number, right? 50 pips up from this should be 1.095, is it? Yes, it is, so 1.095. That is 50 pips up. Now there is the 25 pip levels as well, but again, there there's more to this conversation so 1.095 um, sorry to interrupt do you want to break it down alana and um alana is literally brand new so for her to come on here and to mark that up uh obviously 109 is a whole number but if you're applying that to any chart do you want to break it down how they can do that to any what do you mean as in like if they wanted to come back that was just a bit fast <laughs> 
Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So whenever I'm looking at a new chart, so I'll just start over and do it on another one. Whenever I'm looking at a chart, um, let, let's say GBP CAD. Why not? So I'm sorry. Whenever I'm looking over here on the right hand side of the screen, it's 1.74, you see 1.73, 1.72, 1.71, and 1.7. Do you notice how 1.7, for example, separates the 70s, which is again 71, 72, 73, from the 60s, which would be 69, 68, 67, 66? 1.7 is a major large quarter point on GBP CAD because it separates the 70s from the 60s on this pair. So this on my charts would be a purple line. Uh, why can't I change any of this? Okay. Oh, this is, t oh, there we go. Um, would be a purple line. And then I also put in the text right here, major, large, quarter point, right? Uh, center, right, and there it is right there. Make it much bigger. So that's what I would put right there. This is the major. And so bam, from this one line, the entire grid can be filled out you know, fairly simply. What's 50 pips up above 1.7? 1.75. Or 1.7, yeah. Well, no, 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 not 1.75, 1.715. Excuse me, sorry. 1.75 is 500 pips up above 1.7. So it would be 1.715. What's the next level? 1.7, 1.72. No, wait, 1.715, why am I tripping? <laughs> One point, why is this not like that? Am I looking at the daily? Yeah. I am, I am. Okay, so that is right. Okay, so I'm not tripping. This is 150 pips up. This is not a pair I trade. So you see, I did this to myself on purpose. So I did, you see where I made this mistake. I didn't realize that I was on the daily. I normally do this on the hourly. So I was initially right. So it is 1 1.75. 1.75 or 1.05, 1.07, 1. 1.705 is 50 pips up above 1.7. 1.701 would be the next level. 1.701 or 1. Point, oh my God. I am absolute 1.71. There we go. You see, it takes a, I guess it is a little bit more complicated than it seems sometimes. This isn't a pair I literally ever look at. So now this grid is actually starting to come together with my incompetence of being able to read numbers at the moment because that seems to be a thing but now i've got it actually legitimately figured out this time 1.73 1.735 and so on and so on and so on 1.695 which would be down here 695 right there you see 50 pips it's all it is all of the lines that you see on my charts are just 50 pips apart on AUD JPY. 7750, 78, 7850, 79 on AUD USD, 76, 7650, 77. You know, we can go down here, 7400, 7450, 7500, which is the large quarter point for AUD USD. It's just to melt the numbers over here on the right hand side of the screen. That's it. Just the numbers on the right hand side of the screen. On, on what the whole purpose? Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And so, you know, actually, that's a really good thing. So I guess the last thing that I um, wanted to mention about this as well, which actually just really just kind of comes into swing full with even the first question that was asked at the beginning of this. The purpose of even all of that other brainwaves, cymatics, numerology, understanding the numbers, patterns, those kinds of things. Yes, it of course, it absolutely does indirectly apply to trading, but it does directly apply to all of us in our lives, right? 
by understanding a lot of those things, you start to unlock a lot more, as Tesla himself said, uh, because he's he was not wrong. The purpose of doing stuff like that, guys, is to purposely demonstrate that there is a whole world of things that we haven't been taught on purpose. And the trade house and the trade house experience and the things that we actively work towards on here is to create that type of environment where school kind of becomes fun, the engaging fact of learning by gaining something that you didn't have before you came here and leaving with something more, whatever it is. It is simply the experience of the trade house, which is objectively speaking why we're here. Monetary gain and money is a step in this process, in this entire process of things. By understanding, for example, the way that the sound resonance of the world works, you literally can unlock a massive aspect of your life. Not that that one thing specifically is the thing that literally is the life-changing information. It is collectively all of these little bits and pieces of information that you start to web together, and then it starts to paint this picture. And the beginning of the picture is really ugly because you start to identify the hypocrisy of the world because all of those kinds of things we should have been taught since we were children. By understanding a lot of those things, you unlock a lot of your life and then you're no longer a part of the masses or, you know, perpetuating capitalism and keeping the labor force working by you know everyone in the world agreeing to work for a certain amount of money per hour all of this gets undermined by you know entrepreneurism and millionaires and free thinkers and dreamers and you know entre the word entrepreneur quite literally negates capitalism because everybody cannot be an entrepreneur by definition in a capitalistic world you have to have an overwhelming majority of people that are willing to work for the companies that you are the entrepreneur of, right? Amazon has a ton of employees, for example, but those employees or Amazon in general would not function if everybody was a millionaire. You see what I'm saying? So it serves the purpose as to why a lot of this information is withheld from us. Even in trading, for the people that have gone through smart money, for example, y'all understand that really what it comes down to is everybody was taught to look left when they're going right. And so what we have done is shifted our sight because we are done following what everybody else is doing and looking at what they are doing, or at least doing our best to anticipate what they are doing as opposed to what I was taught. Because what I was taught was how to fail. So the entire premise of trade house in general is to be able to break all of these generational curses and to break a lot of this ignorance that every, you know, again, the vast, vast, vast majority of the billions of people that live on this planet, all of us exist in. And so financial literacy is just one of the things that absolutely is, yeah, again, a very, very important step because we all do need money. Of course, I'm not you know, trying to mitigate the importance of money, but it is a step in actually creating the change that we want to see in this world. But how do you beat money, guys? You don't like burn down the Federal Reserve. That's not going to work. How do you beat money is that everybody has so much money that it doesn't matter. If everybody's a millionaire, guys, who cares if you're a millionaire? That's like you saying you have a dollar. Everybody has a dollar. Money is completely contrived of the belief. Million dollars is nothing. If everybody had a million dollars, you see how it completely falls flat on its face. The entire monetary system falls down if everybody starts making money. So how do we do this? How do we change the world, guys? You genuinely learn how to do this. You learn how to trade. You learn and go chairman. And you do this and you break the cycle. And then you give it to other people because that's what happens here. That's what happens with the trade house. That's what happens with this company is that we literally teach people how to make money for themselves by genuinely learning to trade. And I don't care if you guys haven't made a dollar out of the markets yet. There is, you are 
I say this all the time. The fact that you are here and that you even know of trading in your life puts you ahead of billions of people on this planet. Billions of people right now don't even know about trading, much less like, you know, anything else. I consider it a blessing to be a part of this. I consider it unfathomably, I'm, I'm eternally grateful and happy for being here to do what we're doing right now because we are the change that is happening in the world financial literacy and then we just go give it to others and then we like yo like let's like end cancer and then we all come together and just throw a hundred million dollars each because we can just print money and then just end their entire you know 10 billion dollar a year system just just like that just off of the the flip of a switch we're like yo let's just do it you want to cure the energy problem you want to cure the pharma you want to try to end end big pharma guys i'm not dying in a bed they're coming. They 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 come for people like this. I'm. I mean, they kill people that speak against them. But, anyways, that's a whole other thing. Didn't mean to go that far into the rabbit hole, but you know, that's a thing. <laughs> Where and we'll just bring in Jenna's comment there. Or we must protect Mikey at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the point. If everybody learns this, my value is goes completely just to where everybody else is. I don't want to be a martyr catalyst. I want everybody to learn this. So if they kill me, what difference does it make? Y'all have it. 100%. So. Well, this has been an epic, epic call. Now we've got the recording, so you can go and watch it again and study it. Um, now, obviously Tuesday night's calls aren't typically like this. This has just been a, a requested call for quite some time. So, um, thank you, Mike, for sharing those slides with us. I know that you generally only keep them exclusive for your session, so I appreciate you opening that up for us. Um, much, thank you. Much appreciated. Now, thank all of you, truly, yeah. from the bottom of my heart for being here. Thank you. Thank you for pushing through the hard, the hard parts, the challenges. The yeah. shit is not easy, guys. I know that. It took me three years to get my head around all of it. Yeah. Just on that note, I was having a, um, before we wrap this up, I was having a conversation with um, a new trader who's two months in and getting really frustrated that they haven't made any money yet. Now, I do just want to say, I know Mike would have a fair bit to say on that, um, but I have, you know, just something to say, just as a, as a you know, jogged my memory then. Um, in trading, right, when you have your little breakdowns, like, Jenna, how many breakdowns do you think you had and you called me crying? <laughs> okay, and now look at her. So um, I did the exact same. You know, Mike probably cried to Jordan at some point. Like, <laughs> who knows? But we, we had no one to cry to. He was crying too. <laughs> exactly. So I, uh, you know, there's only two things that can happen when you have a breakdown. Okay, when, you, when I say breakdown, I mean doubt's going to kick in because the two biggest emotions that you fear uh, feel when it comes to trading is greed and fear, right? And then everything else in between um, in my personal uh, experience. So there's only two things that are going to happen when you have a breakdown or doubt kicks in. You're either going to one, quit or two, have a breakthrough. Now, Daniel Slate, he's not on this call right now. Um, and I am just going to, you know, throw him under the bus, but also give him credit because he was on like, he was at his wits end um he's a little bit sick at the moment that's why he's not here but he literally had a breakthrough right after like a little bit of a losing streak which is freaking epic so his last couple of trades have been like profit 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 and every day he's like i'm so close to my breakthrough i am so close and he was just persistent right he's two months in so that's just one example so just remember you're either going to quit or you're going to have a breakthrough and Jenna wants to be made co-host. Where are you? Oh, there you are. I'm all good. I was just, uh, you asked me a question and I'm like, oh, I'm on mute. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, Jenna had a ton of them. So we all have them. So they are normal, but just, you know, stay committed to your goal. Stay committed to why you started this. And every single one of you know that I ask you when you start, why you want to do this. And yeah, you want to learn how to trade. Yeah, making money is cool. Um, but like we say every week, that's the outcome of you doing this. That'll happen inevitably if you don't quit, right? So just stay the course, stay committed to the vision, 
remember why you started and just remember that, you know, we, you literally have a choice here, right? You have a choice that can absolutely change everything for you or you can, you know, stay exactly where you are in that shitty situation or you can ascend to become better, right? So stay committed to the course, the frustrations, learn to exactly that roofs, trust the process and love the ups and downs because, you know, it'll happen for you. It happened for me. It happened for Mike. Ruben, who used to, who's, um, you know, what, a month in now? He's back. Um, Good to see you, by the way, Ruben. Prophet City in his house, like, hello. Um, and he was learning, you know, retail, I mean, whatever else, other, other, other strategies before he came back to us and in the trade house. And now he's, you know, trading gold <laughs> and cleaning up. So Ruby's back. Um, and he actually, Ruben, can you unmute yourself and share your breakthrough that you personally had this week? Because that was a massive one that you haven't had before. Wait, I'll unmute you. Oops, I just muted you again. Sorry. <laughs> um, right, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so the one that I messaged you earlier yeah. this week. So for, I oh know. For about five years or so, I was I was trying to progress myself and better myself uh, in a in a corporate society, trying to manage a company, trying to lead, I guess. But the breakthrough I had was I found that I was looking in the wrong direction. Like Mike said, I was looking left when I should have been looking right. But that breakthrough was I looked right and realised that I needed to better myself. I needed to manage myself personally um, and mentally to be able to succeed in what I wanted to do, not in a, a corporate society. So that was, yeah, I guess that was my, my breakthrough. Yeah. And that's huge because, you know, you've, you've definitely got that, you know, that inner leader in you and you being in the, in the job roles that you're in, you've been wanting to, you know, lead people and manage people but at first, if you're going to do that, you need to lead and manage yourself first. So that is a huge breakthrough that you've had this week, which is, which is epic. So I'm so stoked for you. That's dope. Yeah. Ruben. If anyone has anything else to add to this amazing call, um, I'll, up, I'll upload it tomorrow. So you've all got access to it. But next Tuesday, um, Mike and I will collab a little bit um, to bring you some freaking fire next Tuesday. We've got a lot to catch up on. So next week, same time. Um, and then also Jenna's call 9 p.m. Thursday. So Mike is live 2 p.m. every single day in Go Live. So feel free to plug into him. You know, bit of Mike every day. Good work. Good work. <laughs> <All right. laughs> thank you, Mike. Appreciate you. No, thank you guys. Thank you, SJ. Thank you, Jenna. I love y'all so much. Love thank you. you. Thanks everyone. Appreciate you.